This podcast contains factual information only. It is intended for professional financial advisors and does not contain any personal financial advice. You should not make any investment, insurance or financial decisions based on the content of this podcast. Hey team, Ben Nash here. I'm one of the co-founders at XY Advisor and founder of the rapidly growing Pivot Wealth, which is my business baby. I started from scratch about eight years ago and I've since scaled up to become one of Australia's better known financial advice companies for high income accumulators. You can join me every Tuesday as I have the pleasure of furthering my own knowledge by interviewing some of the best people in our industry and beyond to improve every part of what we do with our advice process. We're currently hiring financial advisors and associates, so if our approach resonates, you can learn more at pivotwealth.com.au forward slash careers. This podcast is brought to you by MetLife 360 Health. MetLife has partnered with Teladoc to provide 360 Health virtual care, which gives your clients access to more than 50,000 local and global medical specialists through the convenience of the 360 Health virtual care app. And best of all, it's at no extra cost as part of their MetLife Protect policy. 360 Health helps to defend against serious illnesses so you can live healthier for longer. MetLife, inspired by you. Hey guys, Ben Nash from the XY Advisor team and today I'm pumped to be here with Ron Pratap from RP Wealth Management. He is the founder, director, uh, senior financial planner, um his business baby he started he's got the same birth month as my business baby pivot uh in august so he's coming up to six years in business um ron is uh one of the fs power 50 50 most influential uh financial planners in uh in australia and also is the um national committee chair for new south wales for the association of financial advisors so uh ron mate thanks for joining us Thanks a lot, Ben. It's uh, good to be here. It's been some time, but uh, looking forward to our chat, mate. I know. We haven't uh, haven't actually properly caught up since the other side of COVID, although we used to enjoy a, a sherbet at the uh, the XY events. Um, be keen to, to get into that uh, at, the, at the social catch-up, which is going to be our first one for a couple of years uh, in a few weeks' time. So, Mate, I'm I'm keen to talk a bit about the the evolution of your business. I know you know uh, when we met, you basically had kicked off your firm. It was just you in the business, and you know you've grown to to where you're at today. You know, getting some solid traction in the industry, building your team. Um, so keen to to hear that story. Um, I thought a good place to start is really just there. Like uh, if you unpack you know the evolution of your business and how you've ended up where you are today. Yeah. Perfect. Well, physically, I haven't really grown. If anyone's seen me, they know that I'm a, a shorty, mate. But uh, in terms of the business, yeah, so this is the third time that I'm on this podcast. First time was a few months into the business, though, so not very long. And I left um, ANZ uh, Financial Planning or, or uh, in the boutique side of things. But uh, I started off as a one-man band, zero client base, so basically – organically growing the business from scratch. Um, I think the second time I came on, I had just hired a outsourced uh, VA, so virtual assistant. And now it's going into the sixth year in uh, August and we're up to five staff with another director coming on board. And And for me, I guess it's, it's all been organic in terms of growing the business slowly and, and getting enough clients. And for me, I... I'm not a risk taker too much, but now getting a director into the business has really, you know, changed things and allowed someone to come in with a fresh set of eyes and and look at the processes, look at the system, and really uh, streamline things. Um, which is Sadat from he's a financial advisor. He was actually my mentor from ten years ago when I first started, or more than ten years ago now at MLC. I sat next to him. He taught me how to be an advisor in terms of what to say, what not to say, and now circle back after a decade and now it's kind of like Mr. Miyagi 
and <laughs> <laughs> karate kid. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And so prior, essentially before COVID, it was still just you and all of this stuff has happened off the back of the, I suppose, COVID and the growth that you've had through that period. Um, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, so um, like I was, uh, I can't mention it before, but just before, it was probably been about two and a half years ago, I was by myself at this stage. So it was leading up to COVID and I was re- I was doing good things. The business was going well, but I wasn't really moving, moving forward. And it was also at a time that, okay, personally, I was going through a separation and a divorce and I was just spending money, but I wasn't really focusing on the business because I think um, my personal life was a little bit, the, the, the judgment was cloudy. And I think I was pulling that into the business life. And I thought, you know, I've got to make a decision. And so I told my ex, you know, we've just got to, you know, stop talking. But at the same time, I needed to focus my energy on something else. And for me, that was my business. So for me, I said, you know what, I've got to get a VA. I've got to put the investment in and just hopefully get more clients as a result of having someone working there and paying a salary. And to be honest, we set up the processes and I started wanting to move towards Zoom meetings and um, digital signatures, but I never really had anyone to handle that process. So I think in about October 2019 is when we got someone on board, Nina, who's a godsend and uh, I cannot do without her anymore. But she came into the business, we trained her and in about December she was used to our processes, used to um, uh, now doing the digital signature and then COVID hit in about February. So for us, in a way, as bad as it is to say, like we changed everything just at a time Mm -hmm. where we needed it the most. And then, you know, COVID hit and markets, you know, you know what happens with markets, it dropped. And Mm. for me, I, I just thought, you know, on the back of the Royal Commission, on the back of these new FDS requirements, I thought, for me, this is the final straw. Like I'm ready to sell the business along with everyone else that's getting out of this. <laughs> and um, like, I'm, I'm just going to have to focus on existing clients. But then to be honest, the conversation was probably about a week or two of, you know, dealing with existing clients. But then all of a sudden, just this influx of new clients just came in. And I think that was a result of people realizing that nothing is guaranteed in life. You know, you need a plan B. They didn't have their insurances sorted out. They didn't have their super strategy sorted out, the investment strategy. And a lot of people realize we need to get serious with our finances. And for us, while everyone was going through lockdown, we could still have those meetings via Zoom. We could still sign clients up digitally without having to sign any documents. And we could still do what we do from the comfort of our my own home and have the back end process of Nina having to to do 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 everything um or all the important stuff um but then it was it we yeah we we were just getting clients and it, it was just getting busier and busier and as a result of that I thought look it, it's getting scary to to deal with all this compliance and FDS and I thought I it, it's hard to be a one man band anymore. Mm. I want to be with someone to be able to make sure that I'm doing the right thing, that I'm seeing things the right way, that I'm judging compliance in the most appropriate way um, and streamlining processes. So, you know, going into 2021, it was more a discussion around from 2020 to 2021 was, okay, I want to either bring an advisor on board. I want to bring another director on board. How do I go about doing that? But it's very hard when you've built up something by yourself yeah. that to let it go. You know, it's very hard to to trust anyone to, especially in this current environment of, you know, getting things wrong and being sued or, um, you know, just bringing someone on board and knowing if you'll work together. It was, it was hard to do that. And Sadat, who is my business partner now, he was looking at starting his own business. He was asking about my licensee. He was asking about my processes. And I just threw out the comment, mate, just come on board. Like, I need someone. And that one comment spiraled into us then talking about the value of the business, how we're going to do things. And then we ended up coming to an agreement. He bought into the business. 
We opened up a second office. We looked at get, doing all these things. And then what happens? Then we go into the second lockdown, which is I'm in Liverpool. So I'm in a four month lockdown now when we've just opened a second office that I never got to see, paying four months rent, but we still had those processes set up. Then we hired the next, uh, we've hired someone in the office because we've still got a lot of retiree clients and clients that don't like that digital process. So there's a lot of paperwork and just scanning and putting everything on, on file. We want someone there. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we just hired a power planner because we're finding the outsourcing thing is starting to take more and more time. We need to bring our, uh, get our implementations a lot tighter, bring mm. our process a lot tighter. And if we can control all the piece, it leaves myself and said that more time in front of the client because we're finding we're just getting bogged down with too much of the compliance and too much of um, running the business and stuff where we need to focus on being in front of the client. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, it's it's the one man band. I think the, the days are numbered. I think a lot of people need to start there. And I think that it makes a lot of sense. Prove your concept, you know, build out your approach and then um, look to resource it appropriately. But it's hard to, to do all of those things. And especially mm -hmm. when you're the main conduit um, as well. How, how did you tackle like with the bringing in another um, director into the business? Because obviously there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Was it more yeah. focused on like, you know, what works for the person? I suppose for, you mentioned that you already knew this person. So it seemed it was like a, from a conversation or was it more like, you know, around who's going to do what and like how did you think that that through? Because mm. I find it's, it's scary and obviously, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Mm. So I guess one thing for me is big on values. You know, you, I think you need to hold the same values in terms of how you treat clients, the type of advice you give to clients, what your expectations are. So we had a big discussion on, you know, where do we see ourselves in the next five years, 10 years for the business and, and personal wise. Like for me, I got into a business because I want to have freedom, that work-life balance, like eventually I want to have a family. You know, the whole reason I started this business was to have, you know, if I had a family, I didn't want to be stuck in a six-figure salary role in a bank and then have a child because I know I wouldn't have made the commitment to um, start a business. I would have been like, you know what, this is security, this is safe, don't take a risk. Why would you risk your future or your, your, your child's mm. life? Mm. So I started the business on the expectation that that would be the future goals. Now, six months in, I went through a divorce or separation and it, all plans changed. But that's financial planning as well, right? <laughs> we, 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 have, we, we plan for what we expect, but we also plan for the plan B. But then it was around, okay, you know, what type of business do you want to have? What do you see? So there was a lot of go goals around that. And even though me and Sadat have been friends for 10 years, we still always talked about client scenarios. He was working at an accounting firm that didn't have the right fit of some clients and he sent them my way. And same time, I called him. He's, he's good on the technical side of things. So me doing this podcast, he doesn't do stuff like this. He's not, he, he like, I. he sees my face on social media and that, he laughs at it, you know. But <laughs> you, you need someone that you can have the banter with Mm. and that you have the values with and at the end of the day you know a lot of partnerships do fail you know whether it be five years 50 years eventually something's going to go wrong or something's going to happen where the partnership's mm. going to end so you know you we try to look at it as much as possible you know we we got a director's agreement we got the share part so shareholders agreement um, we, we said what we want in it, what we don't want in it, how we, our yeah. expectations are for the business. And we were pretty much on the same page as everything. So I think if you, you go into it like that and you have a discussion before really getting to the nitty gritty about numbers and things like that, I think it's about focusing on, you know, your values and if you can work together, do you see yourself being with this person or people, you know, day in, day out, can you call them asking for advice? Like, me and Sadat, we ask each other the stupidest questions, but we're comfortable that we we miss some things. And and but if you're going into partnership with someone that you can't ask basic questions for, 
you, you might be hiding a lot or they might be hiding a lot. We're just so comfortable with each other that, yeah. you know, we, we, we've got the business, but we've also got, we're, we're still good mates. We know when to separate it. We know when to bring it together. We know when there's a time for banter. We know when there's a time to talk about the serious issues. Yeah, totally. It's, yeah. Um, I think that that's, that's sort of where it starts. But um, yeah, I, I think it makes sense that you're doing, doing all of that work at the front end to, to make sure that the alignment's there because I've got mates mm. and you know, other people that you talk to and they, they probably don't. There, there's a need and a, and, a, and a broad alignment and then just jump into things and yeah. Um, yeah. like, you know, it, it can create challenges. Yeah. Also, actually, another thing was I know, like for me, I do a lot of stuff with the younger clients and, um, you know, superannuation, insurance side of things. And we've been getting, a, we get a lot of self-managed super fund inquiries. And, you know, for me, I'm the, the type of advisor where if I can't, if I'm not an expert at it or I don't think I can help you out, I'm going to mm. tell you that I can't, I'm not confident in it and I'm not confident in giving that advice. But there was yep. a lot of missed opportunity in that regard. And so that's come from a self-managed super fund expertise working in a boutique accounting firm. So for me, it was like, there's a lot of missed opportunity there. So if I can bring him in, instead of saying no and trying to look for another advisor outside of my, you know, my circle of control in a way, I can now bring that in-house, have a financial advisor there to be able to deal with that. Also, you know, so that's got the power planning kind of background. He's got the technical side of things. He's great with the investments. Like he, he's good at really the, the, the uh, technical analysis side of things. Whereas I'm good with the marketing, you know, getting the, speaking to accountants, mortgage brokers, doing the BNI stuff, doing the networking. So it's, we, we both have our strengths and know what we're good at. And I can have know that he's doing things in the back end and, and doing stuff that aren't my strongest points. Whereas he knows that I'm bringing in, you know, uh, the website leads, he, focusing on the networking, doing the, yeah. doing, get, getting the bread and butter for the business. Yeah, absolutely. I think it makes sense yeah. to play to your strengths and where you enjoy um, doing things. There's a lot of parts of running a business. So, um, yeah. You know, it's good to good to have a, a, a set of hands that yeah. where it's in their flow. And, yeah. um, oh, it's great! Sense. Like when 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 I when I have an investment, like if I have a big client or anything, you know, you, you I, just to have someone there to be able to work on a client scenario with you is mm. gold. You know, you're you're being being able to sit there and, and and discuss a scenario, and then you've got someone going, "Have you thought about this? Have you thought about this?" You know, eventually you want to grow a team to be able to hire those people. But now having a business partner to be able to do that, uh, it becomes a lot easier. Now, you know, where where our fees were a lot smaller when I initially started, I would never charge those fees again. One, because of the current environment we're in and the cost of compliance and everything. But now we've got the capabilities of the office. You know, we've got we can charge more because I think the value that we're giving clients is becoming a lot higher as well. You know, the tools that we're giving them, the services that we're providing them with. So, you know, you seeing it as an investment and not a cost in a lot of the things you do is going to make things better for your business if you do it in the right way. Yeah. And I think that the more like you bounce ideas off, off another person, there's a lot of different ways to be right with your money. So, um, getting getting two opinions on things just means that you can maximize that value for clients even more, um, yeah. add more value, and and uh, you know make them happier to be in that that advice relationship yeah. as well. Ron, well, yeah. what have been the the biggest shifts for you in your business? You obviously your team has grown, but in terms of like your service and and what you're doing and how you're doing it for clients, what have been the biggest changes over the last six years? Um. I guess it's, you know, when you're, when you're starting, you're just focusing on anyone, getting anyone in the door. You know, I was doing Saturday appointments. I was doing after hours appointment. I rocked to a client up to a client's house. He came out in a towel. And from that point, <laughs> I, I, I was like, oh, what am I doing here? Like, why am I doing these appointments? And, you know, as you, 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 you know, you, the stuff that you used to do when you first started your business, you would never do that stuff. I used to cold call everyone trying to make five calls a day, get rejected on LinkedIn, get rejected on this. Like, 
you start to value yourself more as your client base grows and value and value your time more. So you also, when you value your time more, you want to set better processes and 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 invest it. You're still thinking about the towel. I'm aren't still you? thinking about the guy. <laughs> oh, 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 like he said, seven o'clock. And then he pushed it back to 7.30 and I got there at 7.30 and he's still in a towel. I'm like, mate, you've had enough notice. <laughs> and and that's enough, that, that led to going, you know what, I'm no longer doing appointment at clients' houses unless they, I've already signed them up and the relationship started like that. The, the only reason I'd go to a client's house is if it was a good uh, referral partner's client and, you know, they said it was kind of locked in, but... Now the emphasis is come into the office or do it via Zoom so that way I have your attention because, you know, taking an hour to go visit someone, a half an hour, getting prepared for the appointment, driving back from the appointment, you know, that's three, three hours potentially, three, four hours that you're, you're, you're taking up every day. And I used to go to Blue Mountains, Penrith City, but going, yeah. okay, go on Zoom. You know, you just have to jump on Zoom, do the meeting, if you do the meeting, sorry, if they sign up, you can, you know, start that digital signature process. Um, I've started charging for my first appointments if they come from a website because I found that, yes, the website is good. Facebook, I get a lot of leads and, and they end up being referrals. But I find the initial inquiry from a Facebook lead isn't – there's a lot of community groups that um, – uh, people ask for financial advisors and I'm tagged in a lot of these posts and the person asking for the inquiry usually just is hunting for cost. But people off mm. the back of those uh, inquiries are calling up when they do have the money or they, they, they are ready to do something and then they become clients. But to, to weed out where I'm wasting my time, I ask for initial fee and if they do then sign on from the process, I take that initial fee off the total cost of the advice because I found that I was giving a lot of appointments, doing a follow-up email, uh, email, sending a proposal, putting all this time and effort and then it going nowhere. Whereas mm. if you've got that you know, fee up front, there's a little bit of buy-in from the client. They're coming in for their first meeting. They're, they're giving up their time. So it's just changing little processes like that that have led yeah. me to, to get to where I am and then going, okay, now we can, you know, get someone in the office to just focus on anything that needs to be paper files. Now we can get Nina working on the FDS in the back end. Now we can get a power planner so we can focus more on, you know, especially in this current environment of investments, you know, people are getting worried. We're probably doing more ROAs now. So instead of outsourcing and having a cost, we worked out my costs just for power planning. We're like $36,000 last year. You know, we can probably get a power planner from overseas train them the way we want and then you know that cost is gone plus it's unlimited now because mm. i was probably limiting myself to how many soas i'm doing because of the cost now i don't have to worry about that i just have to worry about the efficiency of the time of my power planner yeah absolutely you know we're just chatting a bit offline but we built a, a team of power planners in um cebu in the philippines and those guys are so like technical and um, yeah, just, just nail it. And it's definitely an asset to the business. Plus the thing that we found when you're, when you're running it as an internal team, it's like you control, you control the timelines. Like, you know, the, you know what your business timelines are, you know, what those SLAs yeah. are, you know, what capacity that people have got. And then you can manage those things together, which I think is important for clients in, delivery and you know quality and um fitting yeah. in with your the way that you want to want to do mm. things and and it's not easy right like you're gonna you're going to try some things it's gonna fail we've invent well, like we said we were we we started off on x plan then we said you know what x plan's too clunky it's taking too long to do tasks we want to move to invite advice intelligence we paid for three four months didn't work out, moved back to X plan because they got our licensee has been good in terms of investing a lot in X plan and changing a lot of threads and using the bid wizards and changing a lot of stuff. So, you know, the investment from the licensee also helped us to be able to, to utilize it to, uh, to work around our um, advice office. 
but then you know there's so many bits and pieces that you can you you want into the business mm. but there's cost then the more people that you hire in the business you've got to think about logins you've got to think about insurance you've got to think about you know their salary salary is one thing it's the logins it's everything else that comes on top of it it's putting them into the process and then changing the process like you know we've changed our process maps that many times but where it's just fine tuning it you know you're not going to get it right from the start but you've got to invest the time invest the resources look at your bottom line all the time because you know there's some times where you know income comes in but it's just going all out with expenses yeah we we're, we're, yeah. this is where we're fine tuning it and now it's gone from a business of what like me I could pull out the money whenever I needed money in the business right mm-hmm. um and that's where how it kind of was like I just kept money in the business whenever I needed it I took it out but now I've got five people to worry about we've I've got a sal- salary now which I haven't had for 5 years uh yeah. like I'm down to, down to the minimum you know, we said, we, we talked about dividend, splitting, you know, bonuses, targets. You know, we, we're, we're starting to set those things up. It was hard because we didn't have that time in the first four months because I was in lockdown. Then we got out of lockdown and it was just getting gangbusters. But the focus this year has been on, okay, process systems, you know, efficiency to create, to, to make a streamlined business. I think it's never ending that, that process. I know that never. I... I uh, had it all in my head for the first year of when I kicked off my business and then I brought my now wife in uh, 12, almost 12 months in and she wasn't from financial advice. So I had to, I'm a bit of a, I think in processes. So like I love a good process, but yeah. I had to make the processes really simple so that someone who didn't have a financial advice background could understand and then follow along with the process, which I think, gave us a real advantage because I'm like, if, if she's going to understand it, then it's going to make it easy for someone that does understand financial advice to, um, to follow it through. But like, we just redid our whole process again and it hasn't, hasn't changed. It's not like we're doing 180 degree change, but we changed, you know, a bunch of the steps and how we do it and the tech that sits behind it. And the, you know, with the aim on making the user experience better or focusing more on a particular pain point or opportunity for clients or the business or whatever. And um, I think, you know, what's happening in a business changes pretty quickly. What advice consumers are, think is important, that changes quickly. And um, what we want and how we want to do things changes pretty quickly as well. So it's like you've got to constantly be um, refining that because I think if not, it's amazing how quickly a process gets out of date. You don't look at it for three or six months and then all of a sudden mm. it's like there's 10 things in there that are broken um, oh, or yeah. that, that don't work and and people like, you know, it just um, sort of it ends up a bit stalled. Mm. So and I'd like to say that you just do it and it's done, but it's, it's not one of those things. That's right. And sometimes you like I, I found you've just got to ask questions. You've just got to ask, does like what does this program do? You know, does it have functionality to do this, this, this? Because, you know, we moved away from X Plan not realizing a lot of the functionality that, that it has that we just weren't getting out of it. And we moved to like advice intelligence thinking that we were gonna get this, but it wasn't exactly what we thought and then we go back to x plan and there was all these functions that we didn't even know about so sometimes you just don't know what you uh, unless you ask um and that comes down to processes and systems and everything so like you said it's just fine tuning it and checking in all the time to make sure it's still efficient Mm, absolutely and it still sort of blows me away with the number of financial planners and the amount of money that we spend on our tech that there isn't a solution out there that's like perfect that nails it for everything but um i kind of feel like there's a i think that that's a conspiracy like i I feel like they're doing it on purpose because (laughs) i feel like if we really wanted to we could make something that does all these things but they've all come together and said you know what just to make it even harder for financial advisors (laughs) we're not gonna make it a hundred percent the great tech conspiracy. You could be on yeah. something there, mate. Oh, mate. We're um, getting it from the government. We're getting from the... Uh, uh, I won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> mate, what's uh, what's coming up for you? What's uh, what's your, What are you focused on over the next little while? Yeah, so look, uh, 
Financial advice has been, you know, great for me. It, look, it was a roller coaster. There were some points where I thought it was all going to end. I, I didn't know, especially with the Royal Commission, you know, if I wanted to be in the like with all the changes and costs going up and everything. There was a point before COVID that I was ready to, you know, sell it all and give up. Like I was over it. I just wanted a job where I didn't have to worry about the drama. Oh, sorry, the stress. You know, taking it home, worry about the costs, worry about all that but I think COVID has really changed the way I look at things and and pushed me more to focus on the business for me now I want to be focused more on being the face of the business and being in front of clients but also you know for me the focus is when I first started my business I was doing a lot of social media stuff and doing videos and educational content but the busier that I'm getting at the moment I've I've, I've stopped doing a lot of that stuff so for me this year I want to focus on that. I did a little bit last year and that's where I got uh, named as the top 50 advisor, um, one of the top 50 advisors in Australia from the financial standard and because I did a lot of articles around, you know, what's happening in the industry and survival of a financial advisor and, and what we're dealing with. Um, I want to focus more on financial literacy to everyday Australians. I think, you know, there's so so much happening around the world and a lot of people have just come out and become YouTube and TikTok stars just by, you know, picking the top five investments and they might get one right, the other four are totally wrong, but because they picked one right, all of a sudden, you know, people are like, oh, you got to you got to follow them and, you know, when crypto markets are going up, when shares are going up, it's easy to pick up the top five and get one of them right or, you know, yeah. pick the top ten and then not focus on the other nine that you got wrong. But where are all these star? Where are all these guys and and girls that talked about the next investments? Now that the markets are down, mm. you don't hear them talking about anything anymore. And I think financial advisors we're very we're held back from what we can say. Right? We know not to even talk about product. As soon as you touch on product, ASIC are, are at our door. You know, you're you're we're we're kind of looked at in a different view compared to anyone else talking about product. So it's you know, we, we just focus more on strategy talk. So I think I want to focus more on the strategy side of things and, and talk about more the planning side of things. Um, I'm working with the AFA, as you mentioned as well. You know, we want to bring financial literacy to, to Australians. And I think in this current environment, it's important. You know, we're also working with the XY group. As you can see that there's now an AFA community on board. Um, which is now we want to get that out there. We want to provide material to advisors so they can go into their own communities and they can use this financial literacy to, you know, teach everyday Australians um, topics that they probably aren't getting anywhere at the moment. Um, mm. And then another thing is, you know, community webinars, doing stuff like that uh, uh, in terms of educational contact, uh, content, financial planning 101s, um, and, and build a bit of a brand for myself. I think when I first started RP Wealth Management, it was all about RP Wealth Management. You know, it wasn't, and then I realized when I started putting my face behind the business, that's when my, I started getting more clients. You know, doing that educational content, doing the blogs, it's all got me there. And I want to go back to that point. But as you know, it's very hard to, sh unless you've got the right people in the business, it's very hard to walk away, step away from that and rely on that. You've probably got it to a point now where you can, uh, you're on the couch with Koshi every uh, Sunday <laughs> Arvo or my, and media appearance all the time. But you've probably got it to a point like that because now you trust the people within your business. Oh, look, I think even when you've, when you've got the right people, it's still hard. And like we were just chatting a bit before we fired up the camera, that consistency is the key. And I think it's, there's always so much, especially when your business is growing, there's so much going on that there's a lot of things that can steal your focus and steal your attention. And I think, you know, I used to work with Steve Salvia back in the day and his big thing was like one message, one market, one, I forget exactly how they did it. It's like the some sort of thing, but it was like a year. you got to be consistent and you got to do it for a period of time because that's when the results come through. And it's like, you start, you do that and you follow it through and you're like, this isn't working. And then you hit a tipping point and it starts working, but then you get really busy. And then so you, you stop because you're busy then there's a whole bunch of stuff going on or then some drama might happen in your business or in your life or in your team or like whatever. And then you, again, it's like constant, your your attention gets gets focused. Mm. So I, 
I would say that I haven't, um, yeah, I haven't nailed nailed that because it's it's still it's so easy to just get pulled into different things um, and protecting your time. It's like the on business marketing is one of those things. So I don't know, maybe it will come, but um, I, I think it's a challenge with all those those things which are important but not urgent. It's easy to let the the urgent or let someone else's urgent, um, you know, consume your time and uh, pull you away from it. Yeah. And, and, and it's it's all a work in progress, right? Where uh, I guess us as financial advisors, there's always the next goal. You know, what's next yeah. for us? So while we're still working on our other goal, we're already thinking about plans ahead. So it's never right. we're, we're always got a little bit of a foot in the door in each thing that we're doing. Um, mm. So it, it's always evolving, but I think I want to focus more on building my building the team. Um, you know, growing my team, bringing more advisors on, you know, being able to bring, I, I think even for me, you know, we're, besides me and the director, you know, we're, we're, we want to bring more females into financial advice as well. That's a focus that I want to do. You know, we've got a young university graduate in the office and, you know, we're, we're seeing where she, where she sees herself in the industry. Um, and we want to promote that as well because I think it's something that at the moment it's just male-dominated. And mm. I think that there's a space for young female financial advisors to really do great things in this world. Absolutely. And I think as we move to a more client-centric, which I know it's been there for a long time, but I think it's increasingly in focus that it's a bit more aligned with a less of like this sales club, boys club type thing that um, mm. is, is less appealing to a lot of men as well as a lot of women, uh, mm. I would say. So, um, yeah, I think that that will come uh, yeah. over time as we keep going down this curve. But, mate, thank you so much for sharing your insights. It's uh, great to see all that good work and, um, yeah, pump the, the the community stuff with the AFA as well. For anyone that's not already around that, um, check out the AFA community on the XY platform. I know you guys have got some cool stuff uh, coming down the pipe over the next little while. No, thanks for that. It was a great chat. It's always good to catch up with you and the XY crew. I think I've, uh, it's a different someone different each, each time and it's good to reflect on where I've come you know it's it's always hard for anyone out there you know doing it like everyone's going through their own kind of battle and struggle and whether it's good you know it's everyone's different but I think this community is great it's really helped me with some questions and whenever I need content or I never or I'm, I'm looking at a strategy this community has been great. So I'm always happy to have a chat with you guys. Oh, man, it's always good to chat. But I think that I was going to mention it before that we we do, we're always looking at that next thing. And it's like our clients as well, that sometimes you need to measure backwards and go, oh, actually, that mm. happened what, like yeah. last six months, last 12 months. Oh, that was pretty good. Yeah, maybe I should keep at it because that's where we, yeah. um, you know, get that motivation to keep going. And it's mm. not easy, like with some of the content that you've said as well. That, yeah. Um, yeah, man, so... Appreciate well, even, you that message as well. Yeah. Well, the last thing I was going to say was, you know, sometimes the clients, they like to hear your struggles and they want to see that you didn't just get there being a successful advisor. Me, I started talking about my history and my struggles that went from my, from my childhood of not having money and stuff. And when they hear that journey, they see a person in front of them that's going through the same stuff that you're going through mm. and, and that personal relation as much as we go into this digital world and zoom meetings and stuff that personal connection is always going to be that financial advice absolutely yeah i think whether mm. that's brand building or working one-on-one -on -one with clients or whatever that it's um that it's a human connection that people connect with like makes sense so yeah. Mate, it's great to see you kick goals. So, um, yeah, keep at it. Uh, we'll see. You probably have 50 by the time we talk um, next time in the team. So, uh, <laughs> looking forward to that chat. Oh, maybe it's on Channel 7 next time or Channel 9. Which... <laughs> we'll see, mate. Now that I've got the podcast room set up, uh, I'm, uh, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Thanks, Ron. We'll catch you Thanks, next time, mate. mate.